Well, good morning and happy Tuesday. Uh, as I noted yesterday, um, in Atlanta, filming these on Saturday, uh, I feel a little exposed, honestly, um, doing a daily devotion <laughs> and being 72 hours out in this world at this time when things are changing so rapidly, feel a bit extended, but um, I am hoping uh, that all is well in the world and in your life as we move into the week. So, um, yesterday we looked at the word if in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 6. But uh, Christ is faithful as the son over God's house, the church, and we are his house if we hold on to uh, our courage and the hope with which we boast. So, I talked about um, the perceived threat here. Look, so the book of Hebrews is a book about Jesus being better than anyone and, and anything. Chapter one, better than the prophets. Chapter two, better than the angels. Chapter three, better than Moses. And, uh, and, and I said, look, the gospel is better news than law. These are not always our concerns. If, if the writer of Hebrews were writing today, we might get arguments that Jesus is better than, than reason, or Jesus is better than democracy, or he's better than the capitalist system, or he's better than Islam. Like, the different, different arguments would be made. Where, where are you ultimately going to ground your hope? But here um, uh, in chapter 3, he's saying, look, Jesus, the gospel is better than, uh, than the law. And, and I went on then to say, look, there's a tension here, and it gets talked about. We'll look at it later in this book, look at it in the history series. And I, I sort of framed up the, the debate that went on between uh, Jacob Arminius and John Calvin uh, and used the word tulip of the flower. By the way, um, Arminians, Wesleyans, uh, they, have, uh, they have a flower as well. It's the daisy. Uh, so you, you can imagine picking the petals off the daisy. He loves me, he loves me not. He loves me, he loves me not. Bad seminary joke, sorry about that. But uh, we framed all of that up and I said, uh, look, I'm not gonna take the, the tension out of, the, out of this passage. I side more with the, with the Calvinists, with God's sovereignty. I don't think, I think it's all grace. I think God is much bigger than I can possibly comprehend. And I depend upon him holding on to me, not me holding on to him. But when the text says that we need to do what we can to hold on, as it does in Hebrews 3, 6, I want to pass along that warning. Today, I want to make a, another notice here that, uh, about the word of God being mysterious and powerful. So verse 7 of chapter 3. So I just read chapter 6, right? Christ is faithful over the house, and we are part of the house if we hold on. Uh, verse 7, so as the Holy Spirit says, then quote, today, if you hear this, his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion, goes on then to quote Psalm 95. And there's a couple things to just reflect on here. But first of all, by attributing uh, Psalm 95 to God, to the Holy Spirit, God, the Spirit, so as the Holy Spirit says, this is, an, this is just one of the many different ways that we are being told that the Old Testament, that the Bible is God's word and uh, that, that we should trust it. So um, the, the passage, when we, when we build the argument that scripture is, is inspired, we actually are building the argument that scripture is not inspired, it's expired. It's the breath of God. It's not inspired inspiring like a football coach giving an inspirational speech, but it's literally the breath of God, God's voice to us. And so uh, I, wanna, I wanna commend scripture to you. Um, and I also wanna note here, verse seven, it says, so as the Holy Spirit says, it, it doesn't, that quotes Psalm 95, it doesn't say, so as the Holy Spirit said, there is a sense, and we'll see this later in chapter four of Hebrews, Verse 12, there's a sense in which the word of God is living. It's alive. It's, it's current. It's dynamic. Hebrews 4.12 is that the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword. It's piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit, of both joint and marrow, able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. So um, I want to say to you, um, the word of God is for you. God has written you, uh, not just a letter, he's written a book, 
And I, I've not heard God speak audibly to me, but almost that. Uh, there are times when the word of God, I'm not reading it, it's reading me, where I, I sense God's power and God's direction coming from scripture. So I want to say to you, be a student of the book. Uh, God speaks today and he speaks through, chiefly through his word. So, study to present yourself a workman approved unto Christ, who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. Have a good day.